I'm Tim Laird with Kevin Harned, and it's time to reveal more secrets of bluegrass chefs. And Tim with us today, one of the state's most experienced chefs. He's known as the father of fine dining in Louisville and even served a dish at the inauguration ceremonies for President Reagan. Dominic Saratori from Ditto's is with us and he's cooking big with beef and revealing the secrets to his most popular seafood dish at Ditto's. All of that and a creative new cocktail from Tim that calls for champagne. It's all local and all positive. It's Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs right before this live studio audience and it starts right now. Hi everybody and welcome to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett at our home base here in Louisville. We're in Kitchen Studio right here at Bourbon Barrel Foods and you are in for a great show today. We have Chef Dominic Saratori from Ditto's here with us today and he comes with a lot of local culinary history. Dominic ran the kitchen at Casa Crisanti back in the 80s, where many of Louisville's top chefs got their start. Now he's the chef and owner of Ditto's on Bardstown Road, where he serves fine dining quality food in a casual atmosphere. And it's been a local favorite for decades. If you like steak, wait until you see this. It's Ditto's famous beef chop. And you're going to see what makes it so good coming up. Plus, we'll get the secrets to making Dominic's famous stuff, Pacific Bass, at home. But first, meet my co-host, America's CEO, the Chief Entertaining Officer we all know and love, Tim Lair. Hello, Kevin! Hello, Jay. Wow! How I'll about tell you, this? I'm huh? excited. Great audience. Look oh, at that. They are fantastic. And hungry. And hungry. And we're going to feed them well. Look at this. Talk <laughs> about beef. That is incredible. It's a big beef when show right there. When they say beef, it's what's for dinner. No kidding. The that's, rest of the week. <laughs> that's it. That's unbelievable. So I can't wait to see what he's going to do with you that. You want to get started? Let's get I'm started, Kevin. All way. right. It's a great day to be here in Kitchen Studio because we've got a great audience. We do. And... A fantastic chef. We love him. He's been on our show many times, and he always does a great job. Here he is from Ditto's, Dominic Saratari. Good to see you. Chef Dominic, good to see you. Good to be here. Wow. Hello, everyone. Ditto's, here you are. Here we are. And, 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 and the, the father. Oh, listen, I mean, it cookie. goes back. When you think of the chefs here in Louisville that have a name, they've likely worked with this guy. Right. I'll tell you, all the top chefs, I mean, my gosh, Dominic, uh, you've got a lot of great history here in Louisville, and we're so glad you stayed here and didn't move away. It's been good. Been, Louisville has been very nice to me. Very Excellent. nice to me. Excellent. Well, and we, we love Ditto's, too. And we've had been fortunate to have you on our show many times. Yes. Our show's been going on for a number of years, and uh, this is not your first rodeo. No, no. Always a pleasure to be here, though, and, and enjoy the live audience, enjoy the, sh the shots at the, sh at the restaurant every now and then, and, and sometimes we even do the big venues, you know, for the fundraisers. That's yeah, right. It's always been fun. Well, you know what I'm saying? it's been so good. Great. Today you're sharing some secrets. Yes, we're going to do our beef chop, which has been a mainstay at Ditto's for many years, and I wanted to show people just how we cut it and how we sear it and, and, and what a wonderful item this is. This is a bone-on ribeye. We have cleaned up the bones. A ribeye and a prime rib are basically the same piece of meat. But a lot of time you buy a boneless ribeye at a restaurant and they'll just trim off all the bones for you. Okay? Oh, I got you, yeah. But, and our chops are cut at about 24 to 28 ounces, okay? And this is something you can have your butcher prepare for you. So basically we're just going to cut right through that. So if you're going to the butcher, what do you tell them to give you? I would like a bone-in beef chop cut from the prime rib. Okay. Got it. So basically your end check, chuck cut and then we'll cut one more cut. Wow, I mean, that's a big piece. <laughs> is that what like you I serve? Said, this yeah. is what we serve at the restaurant. And I say <laughs> they run anywhere from 24 ounces to sometimes two pounds, wow. depending on the size of the ribeye that you bring in. And what we're going to do is we're going to tie it for confirmation. I had a flashback to the like the Flintstones, you know, when it's I know. Uh, put the on the cart, turns it over. <laughs> there it is. Here's your beef. <laughs> this is the cut that did it. <laughs> right. <laughs> So you're actually just tying that around the outside? Uh, and outside, so while it cooks, it, it, it keeps its confirmation. Oh, okay, so it's, it'll stay together that stay way. Stay together. Because otherwise right. it'll right. tend to Right, because sometimes apart. as, what will happen as, 
as the as the fats break down, it may curl and it may you you know, lose the shape a bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to dredge it. Oh, in, here's your uh, in the blackening seasoning. And you can buy the blackening seasoning. You season. can buy the blackening season. We make our own, according to uh, Paul Prudhon's recipe, which we were fortunate enough years ago to meet at the first Taste of America that was held here and sponsored by Grisanias. Oh, very Louisville, good. Very versatile taste, yes. What we do is just going to griddle it up a little bit. So a little oil on the, little uh, on the griddle. And then on the griddle. The blackening season has three peppers in it. It has cayenne pepper, black pepper, and white pepper. All right. So it can be, it can be quite strong. So we'll move on now and we'll start, because of time constraints, we're going to start and we'll work on our, we'll start our corn risotto, because the risotto is a rice from Italy, a boreal rice, named for the town which it was derived from, and it's a short grain starchy rice, okay? So the risotto <laughs> has, like I said, we have onions, we have a little garlic in the onions, we have the boreal rice, we have the corn, Parmesan cheese, fresh basil, and uh, white wine to go with that, okay? So we'll get that started here, just only for the time constraints here. Okay, onion sauteing here. And we'll go ahead and we'll get our beef chop in the oven. So it, it what, goes in. At what temperature, Dominic? We're this, gonna put that in? I, I like about 350. We're okay. set at 300. Chef has his food in here, but I think we should be fine, okay? Meanwhile, we've, through the magic of TV, we've had one already wow. in the oven. Oh, okay. man. And, and it comes and, out. And, and the secret to that really is you do want to finish off in the oven because it is such a thick piece of uh, meat is that it, yes. you, you can't really get it all done without burning the outside if you do it on the grill or the pan. So exactly. in the oven, it right. finishes up. Exactly. And, and depending on how thick your cut is and what temperature your oven, this could take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. And then the so what we've done is we've in. sauteed the aborio rice, okay? okay. And now we're going to hit it with a little white wine. Okay. And then again, this is a slow process where you just let the rice absor absorb the moisture as you go along, okay? Yeah. Well, so since it's a slow process, we're gonna take a quick break, so everybody stay with us, right, Let's Kevin? Let's do that. We've got plenty more secrets to come from Dominic Saratori from Ditto's right here on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Don't go anywhere, we're cooking. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett alongside Tim Laird. We're having a lot of fun in the kitchen today with Dominic Saratori from Ditto's and Kim Thornsberry is here. It's nice to see you. Nice to Happy see you. birthday. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a gift. Your husband, the, your husband said, hey, you know, what do you want to do? You, and why is that? Because I never miss this show. Well, we appreciate ever. that. We feel like we have a lot of fun on the show and we hope it comes across at home. You, you enjoy watching it. Yes, I you do. You like learning the secrets from Louisville's best chefs. Yes, I do. And Dominic Saratori happens to be one of them. You know, we call him the father of fine dining, so that's, that's a title. Yeah. Well, it's wonderful. Well, it, thank you. Thank it you. is wonderful. We want to see uh, how he did today. So you have the opportunity to take a all taste right. here, Kim. Um, it's all about beef at least for now. He's going to reveal some secrets to some bass coming up, but oh. how'd he do? Oh, Good? Like the, the flavors seasoning. are good? The blackening, you, oh. you like the seasoning there? Yes, it's perfect. perfect. Awesome. Well, that's what he likes Thank to you. hear, and that's what we like to hear. Kim, thanks for being Thank here. You. We appreciate that. Happy One of our birthday. great audience members, and Tim, we have a number of them here today who we are do. enjoying the show, and they're all going to have a chance to take a taste. That's the beauty of being on the show uh, or it, watching this. Not only do you get to see the show yeah. itself, but you get to taste everything the chefs make. Now, you're mixing up a cocktail like you always do, and this one is sort of in a uh, tribute it, it is a tribute cocktail it's the uh <laughs> it's territory spritz i like to call it it's a little <laughs> tribute to our shop anyway starts out a glass with a little bit of uh, corbel champagne goes right. in that's All easy right. and then when you top it with an italian liqueur that becomes oh, yeah, a yeah. spritz okay? okay so that's where the spritz ah. comes from so a little italian liqueur goes in Boom, just a little bit, just add a little flavor. And what is that flavor? Uh, it's, it's a mixture, it's kind of a bitters flavor, but okay. it really is nice and soft, a very complex uh, 
a little bit of orange, a little bit of uh, a lot of flavor. It's really gotcha. hard to distinguish, okay. but that's a classic Italian spritz, spritz right there. Now, Dominic's a little nutty, so <laughs> I, I thought I better put in a little nut liqueur to uh, really spice it up. But this is uh, Rivulet, uh, actually a local product. So, okay. uh, and this is kind of a, a pecan nut. If you go in, just like that. Just a little bit is all you need. All right. And here it is, the Serratory Spritz. It's Kevin, the spritz. Cheers. cheers. Here cheers. we go. Let's see how we did. Where's mine? <laughs> <laughs> you just keep yeah. cooking over there, Dominic. What you worry about? Hey, you need this cocktail after me and I don't get any? What is this all about? Uh, Dominic, we'll get you a special one after the show. Okay. You still have okay. to do some cooking That's over there. Right? Right. <laughs> That's good. Isn't that delicious? That is good. Nice. Yes, very nice. All right, well, we better All get right. back over to Dominic Risotto before he runs us out. Risotto is cooking away. Okay. We're going to move on. We're going to make our roasted garlic sauce, which has multiple uses. I come from uh, the old school where when I went to culinary school and was uh, trained in, um, in a five-star restaurant with all French chefs, there were, there were mother sauces were, were, the, were the base, and then you build everything off the mother sauce. So I sort of carry that theme through this. So this sauce would be referred to as a compound sauce variation on a velouté, and a velouté means a velvety sauce, okay? We're going to put a little olive oil, and we're going to saute the garlic a little bit, and then we're going to add a little marinara, about four ounces. And you go through a lot of marinara, too, because yes. you've got some uh, pasta dishes oh, you, that yes. are just wonderful. Okay. Boom. Then <laughs> the other ingredients are the roasted garlic, and I love it about four ounces of that. because it, it brings up a little nuttiness There's, to it, a little more flavor. Right. Is, You're getting two different flavors. The saute garlic, the saute raw garlic is going to impart a different flavor than the roasted garlic because the, when you roast that garlic, it brings out those natural sugars. Okay. And that's easy to do, roasting garlic, oh, right? Yeah. Very simple, yeah. Just, you know, we toss it with some oil and we just put it in the oven, maybe a, a 350 oven and stir it occasionally and probably be about... Probably about half an hour, you know, yep. just, you know, but you want it golden brown. And okay. that was our chicken stock. When you take that out, you, that roasted garlic, you can actually blend it up and it's a nice little spread on uh, some toast oh, or whatever. Oh, yeah. It's uh, steamy. Multiple uses. Now, this sauce is finished with lemon juice, balsamic vinegar. Okay. We put some dried herbs in it, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of sugar. Salt and sugar. There salt we go. And sugar. Okay. Just gonna bring that to a rapid boil, and we're gonna thicken it with a slurry of cornstarch. So you're just taking some cornstarch, some mix cornstarch, it with a little mix bit of water. water, make a slurry. Yeah, because a lot of times if you just put the cornstarch in here, it clumps up, right? Clump right up, right? Exactly. So you always. That's where gravy it. goes bad, Kevin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've seen Tim get a little slurry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to let that tighten up a little bit. And I've seen Kevin get a little sauce. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. See? See? Welcome to the show, Dominic, yeah, once sure. again. Have a drink? Have yeah. a drink? Yes. <laughs> Dominic's going, you know, I'm cooking no. over He's here. He's like, who's the nutty one? <laughs> so we just add a little more of the stock to the risotto. Okay. And that's, again, you got to be patient with the risotto, right? Exactly. Just to add a little time. And this will be ready momentarily. And what we're going to do, for right now, we're going to make the, we're going to slide over to this stove over okay. here. All right. And we'll go ahead and show you how to use the roasted garlic sauce to make a very quick pasta. And we'll just go ahead and get this sauteing a little bit. Broccoli. You've got all burners going there. Uh, you don't have another pan you need to be <laughs> No, I'm good. Use. I'm good. Every burner is going. No. There we go. Thank you. But this is like you're at the restaurant. I mean, oh, you yeah. are running up the. Because he didn't even need a spoon. He just picks them up and throws them. Right. <laughs> I, I, I kept hearing that sizzle, so I was I know, digging out a, a spoon. Whatever. I've... Okay. We're gonna put our broth in there. And, we'll and this is the way it is. Like when you go into Ditto's, this is dominant. I mean, that's is what this? you see. You didn't wear your traditional hat, though, Dominic. You're yeah, right. You know, right, yeah. you're always in the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, it's, spot it's, him. it's it's an important thing. They have to have a hat. You ha we have to be wear gloves, hats, and everything. It's, sure. It's uh, the uh, laws the way they're set up today for food safety. So we're just gonna step wanna... back. Hey, okay. by the way, for food safety at home, Kevin just doesn't cook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's safer for everybody that it's way, Dominic. It's safer for the food at least. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, we talked about the pine nut stuffing. This is very, very, so we just take some panko. Okay. We have our toasted chopped pine nuts. And at home, you can, if you want to, you can throw all these ingredients in a cuisine arm. Just oh, whiz them up. And whiz them up a little bit. And the golden raisins. Quick. By golden the way, raisins. the toasted pine nuts, that's important that you toast them first exactly. to bring out the yeah. oils. Yeah. And, yeah. and it, if you find it hard to find pine nuts, you can substitute almonds. Kevin, I'm going to behind you in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. I think there's a piece of bass on a plate in there. Well, good catch, Thank Kevin. Look at that. It's a catch of the day. Catch okay. of the day. There it is. Okay. Oh, that's a beautiful this, looking fish. Though. This is a fillet cut from the center of a Pacific bass, otherwise known as corvina. Again, I say very popular at our restaurant. It has a. It's flaky. It's very delicate, and this is just extremely popular. Mm. Not as overfished as some of the Arctic basses and, and other okay. fish that yeah. are so popular in restaurants today that are are, are a little bit under stress. So we're going to, again, dredge this in panko. I'm going to sear it on both sides. I did not, if you notice the way I do this, I do not put any flour or egg on it. I put the moisture from the fish. Kind of a natural uh, exactly. glue. Just huh. actually hold that on. And I love it because that's a much more delicate flavor. Clarified butter, right? A that's little clarified good. butter. Exactly. And when you clarify it, it, it doesn't uh, burn as easy. Exactly. Right? That's the idea behind it. So here's our bowtie pocket. Oh, beautiful. Mm. See that? Very popular dish at Ditto's. Yeah, yes. actually, that looks good. And we serve this with a crispy chicken breast, usually. It's a, it's, it's a good bread. I garnish it with fresh diced tomatoes, a liberal amount of Parmesan cheese. Parmigiano. And some green onions. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. And, and again, very, very popular dish. Again, it can be it can be served as a vegetarian dish if you are in the mood for that type of Mmm, Nice that. color. So now we have our color. We actually discard the oil, the butter. Okay. So right. now we're going to take those bread, the stuff, the panko topping. Okay. That's going to be a topper. Okay. And we're just going to. Now that is a topper. Right. That's, that's Not so heavy that you overwhelm the fish. You just want it to give a nice little flavor. Okay. Because it's a nice, uh, flavorful fish. I mean, exactly. oh, that, that, kind that of delicate in a way. I like it. Oh. The reason I'm doing this is I'm going to cook the sauce with the fish. Well, what will happen is it's a type of braising. So we now will allow the the drippings or the natural juices from the fish to drip into the sauce and they'll enhance that sauce and give it a totally different profile than when you taste it on the pasta. Wow. Hmm. Okay. In the oven it goes. All right. Okay. All right. We're going to cook that for how long in the oven, Don? I would say, again, I like my fish at about 130 degrees. We don't want to overcook it. Um, I would probably, we'll probably give that 10 minutes. Okay. Well, while well, that's uh, cooking in there for 10 minutes, we'll be right back, because uh, stay with us, Kevin. Yeah, let's take a break. We're coming back with more as we wrap up the show with Dominic Serratori from Ditto's right here on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. We are cooking in the kitchen with Dominic Serratori. Tim, what a treat this has been. We're wrapping up the show. The fish. I, I love it. The magic of TV. Only cooked about 10, 10 minutes. minutes. The now bass came out of the uh, oven, and it looks absolutely oh. fabulous. That sauce that's all over there, that uh, stuffing topper, if you yes. will, is just absolutely crunchy. Looks beautiful. And now we're finishing up the risotto as we go here. And also, you revealed the secret to the name Ditto's. I never knew about this, but tell us about how you came upon right. Ditto's. When Frank and I were uh, trying to come up you know, with a name and we wanted it to be catchy, we found out that the building we were buying on Bartstown Road was a Ford dealership and built in 1927. And it was there and it was called Ditto and Hertzwell Motor Company. And we just thought the name Ditto would be fun. And we just grabbed it and, and, and ran with it. Originally, we opened as uh, Ditto's Food and Drink, and then we just changed it a little bit that we added the grill to it later on. Okay. Ditto's Grill. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Uh -huh. Yes. It's a fun so place. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are going to finish our risotto now. Okay. Okay. And the things to make it nice corn, fresh chiffonade basil. Beautiful basil. 
Garden tomato. Mm. Parmesan cheese. Oh. And a little salt and pepper. Okay, we'll stir that in. We started with the risotto today at the beginning of the show. We're finally ending with it. Risotto is a time-consuming dish to make. Exactly. But when it's done. Oh, I know. It's my favorite. Right. And then it's we're just going to cheat a little bit. We're going to have a little cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That makes it yummy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. really. It's almost, it's almost like an Alfredo. Uh, I, you know? yeah, <laughs> that looks so good. And that's exactly. what's fun about risotto is once you make the risotto, you can add whatever you want. To, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. exactly. just love so, it. There's our risotto. There we go. Gosh, I, you can see how just creamy and luscious. And it has a nice little shine to it, too. I think that's the starchiness from the arborio exactly. that helps out. And exactly. Of course, the cream gives it a nice little kind of shine to go? it. We're going to put our bass on top of that. And we don't want to disturb the topping, so we're just going to go around the outside <laughs> with the sauce. Look at that. <laughs> Okay. I could just heaven. eat the risotto, but now imagine what that's oh. like. Clean up a little bit after ourselves here. Okay. I might have a new favorite, Dominic. You're right. It'd be, try. It'd be good to try. I mean, I, people get hooked on dishes at, at Ditto's. I mean, people come in, they have the raspberry chicken. They will never move off of it. Yep. Mr. Carbonara here. You know, he is. I know. Mr. <laughs> this is good. You might find something new. I, I try. I get in there and be like, I'm going to get something different. I'm going to branch out. I uh, need <laughs> the pasta carbonara. It's so good. You know, when something is that good, you just want to have it. So the next time I see you, maybe you'll be Mr. Bass. There you go. <laughs> bon appetit. Bon, bon appetit. appetit. I'll tell you what, Dominic. We've shared the secrets from Dominic Saratori, the father of Louisville's fine dining scene. We'll see you next time. For Tim Laird, I'm Kevin Harnett. You've been watching Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I know it was awesome. awesome. Thank that you. was great. I, 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 I do too.